Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us here tonight for the 2020 Virtual Showcase of Schools presented by the Department of Choice and Career Options. I'm Amy Littman with the School District of Palm Beach County here with choice leaders to help guide you through this year's Virtual Showcase. The theme is Innovate Your World. Our goal this afternoon is to share why the School District of Palm Beach County is your best choice in education. We have several members of our team here to explain the process for finding the best program or school for your student. So to kick things off, we first want to introduce you to Superintendent Dr. Donald Fenoy, who has this mes message to share with you. Hello, I'm Donald Fenoy, the proud superintendent of the A-rated school district of Palm Beach County. I am honored you have chosen to sample the hundreds of choice and career options available to our students. Unfortunately, because of social distancing guidelines, the annual showcase of schools will be held virtually this year. As they say, the show must go on. Even though I'll miss seeing you in person at the South Florida Fairgrounds, I assure you we have prepared an exciting virtual experience which will span many days. Students entering pre-kindergarten through grade 12 can choose from a range of programs that provide innovative, engaging, and rigorous academic instruction by teachers who are certified in specific the School District of Palm Beach County is committed to ensuring that your student reaches his or her highest potential and is prepared for postgraduate success. Enjoy the showcase of schools and don't hesitate to reach out to individual programs to learn more. Thank you. And joining us now to kick off this virtual showcase of schools, we have Assistant Superintendent Jay Bogus. Thank you so much for being here. We also have the Choice and Career Options Director, Dr. Gerilyn Johnson. Thank you for joining us. And we have Program Planner, Tara Cobell. Again, thank you all for being here. And thanks to all of you who are watching right now on Facebook Live. We have a very exciting evening plan for everyone. So let's start off with what we're doing here right now. We're usually at the South Florida Fairgrounds, mm -hmm. seeing students talk about their programs. It's a very exciting night, but of course this year we had to change things up a little bit because of the pandemic. We want to make sure everyone is safe. So Mr. Bogus, can you just tell us a little bit about what to expect with this year's virtual showcase of school? Sure thing. Thanks for having us, Amy. And uh, again, an incredible opportunity that we have going on today and throughout the rest of this year. As you stated, we're normally at the South Florida Fairgrounds where we have nearly 15,000 community stakeholders come and check out out our 300 plus Choice and Career Academies. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen, but uh, our Choice and Career Options team started early on in the summer realizing that those mass gatherings will not happen in Palm Beach County, at least for the time being. And in doing so, how do we make this shift to a virtual platform to not only showcase our 300 award-winning programs, but really to, to make our community aware of all of our school offerings and every school in Palm Beach County in addition to our Choice Showcase and all the programs that we have. So that's really what you're going to, to see today and it will be live and open throughout the entire Choice process. In addition to this, this is a, a great time that we're re-engaging with our community and stakeholders and, and really building that trust back to make sure that they realize that Palm Beach County district schools are your best choice. No doubt, no, no questions about it. And really, I think when you get to see what this program offering has and the, the virtual platform that's been built out, you'll get to hear from the principal. You'll get to see their leadership and the culture within those schools and really the, the, the impact power that our choice and career programs are, are having from north to south, east to west, throughout all of Palm Beach County. I think one of the coolest parts about the showcase being virtual this year is that people will be able to access this in the coming months as they apply. So Dr. Johnson, what are some of the deadlines this year to apply for choice programs? This is of course the kickoff for everyone to explore those programs and where can people go for more information? So thank you, Amy, for having us tonight. Uh, this is truly an exciting opportunity for us. Definitely something that we've never done before, but um, uh, as our theme this year uh, dictates, uh, innovate your world. And so we are also innovating uh, with this uh, virtual showcase. Mm -hmm. So if parents and students want more information, they can definitely uh, visit our website by going to www.palmbeachschools.org forward slash showcase, and they will access the platform that we have built that will highlight all of the 300 plus programs 
in addition to all of our other schools and what they have to offer, as Mr. Bogus um, mentioned earlier. In terms of deadlines, uh, if you have your calendars out, if you have your phones out, you can go ahead and plug in a couple of deadline dates um, that you will want to remember. The first date that you'll want to remember is November 2nd. November 2nd is the date that the application actually opens. And so the application can be accessed at mypbchoiceapp.com. The other date that you'll want to mark if you're interested in having your child apply for a performing arts school, that deadline date is December the 18th. All other choice programs deadline is January the 29th, 2021. And then the 1st of April will be the date that the results will come out. So plug those dates into your calendars. Um, again, November 2nd, the application opens. Performing arts deadline for applicants is December 18th, January 29th for all other choice programs, mm -hmm. and April 1st will be the results. Those are some very important dates for everyone to keep in mind. We will, of course, remind you of those here on social media, on Facebook, constantly as we approach them. But right now, our big focus is on this virtual platform for the Showcase of Schools. So, Ms. Cobell, can you walk us through what that platform looks like, what people will be able to experience and access once they get in there to really explore our amazing choice programs? Absolutely. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tara Cobell, and I am a, a program planner with the Department of Choice and Career Options, and I'm so excited to be able to show you the first sneak peek as it's going live right now of the showcase of schools. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to palmbeachschools.org forward slash showcase. And what you're seeing here on your screen right now is the actual landing page or homepage to this virtual showcase. One thing that's very important to know if you have friends that also um, wanna get onto us but may need some assistance with different languages. In the upper right hand corner, we are using uh, the Google Translate so this website can be viewed in any language. So if you do have friends or family, please share this information with them. Uh, there are links to the different Facebook live events uh, being hosted between 4 and 6 uh, p.m. this evening. We are also having a Facebook live in Spanish and in Creole uh, soon after this English, ver uh, English showcase. Also released today is the new choice booklet. So here on this landing page, you will see a copy of the Innovate Your World booklet. If you click on it, you will actually go to an e-booklet so you can actually sort through and take a look at all of the programs. And in just a few minutes, Dr. Johnson will share some of the new programs that are being launched FY for next year for 2022. If you look in this lower left uh, right hand corner, you'll also see a live chat box. We're excited to let you know that if you have any questions during this time, you can type in any questions and the Department of Choice and Career, Career Options staff is there right now waiting for you to answer some, to ask some questions and you can reach them directly and they will chat back to you. If you have any program specific questions, please contact the school directly and we're gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. As you scroll down on the page, you'll see a couple of welcome messages and videos. You just heard from Dr. Fenoy, our superintendent, Mr. Bogus, and Dr. Johnson, who are sitting alongside me right here. How to navigate this site. First thing that you wanna do is you want to identify what your zone school is. It's very important to do that as a first step because there's probably, most likely, so many programs and opportunities offered at your zone school and many parents may not be aware of what their zone school is. Just because you live closer to one school does not necessarily mean that that is the school you're zoned for. So by selecting step one, find my school, you can put in your address and it will identify what elementary, middle, and high school you are zoned for. You can then explore those schools and see what options are available or use the filtering options below to find exactly what it is you're looking for depending on the grade level or a certain program or a specific school. Also up here, we do have links to the calendar for open houses. Uh, open house will be held at different schools throughout the school year. And then of course, once November 2nd opens, as Dr. Johnson stated, you will be able to apply. So let's take a look. We're gonna just 
take a look here at Atlantic High School. If I'm a parent that's looking for an IB program and I just happen to do my filters and land on Atlantic High School, once you click on the blue tile that hosts the school name, it will expand and show you all the different options that are available. Atlantic High School has two different choice, choice IB related programs and six in-house programs. By clicking on each link, it will take you to a description of each program as well as other schools that it may potentially be offered at. Also, on the expansion, you can hear for, directly from the choice coordinator or principal of the school in their welcome message. And under program information, you'll be able to see different marketing videos and documents that the school wanted to share with you during this showcase of schools. The last important feature is the contact us. Many schools are offering live chats starting now through 8 p.m. in order to see, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in order to determine and locate who's doing their live chat, you have to find what school you're interested in visiting tonight, just as you were if you were at the showcase. Instead of walking up to a booth and talking to the coordinator and school staff, you're going to click on their name under program coordinator and send them an email. They will respond to you or you will receive an auto reply with a time and a Google Meet link to log in and ask any questions. If you're unable to do so or if that school is not offering a live session at this time, send them an email and they will get back to you this evening or as soon as possible. So looking forward to seeing you here and let us know if you have any questions by sending us a live chat right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know that I'm looking forward to going through some of those different videos and seeing what schools have provided to share the very exciting things that are happening at their schools and the amazing programs that they have. This year there is a big focus on every single school that we have in the School District of Palm Beach County being your best choice but we have more than 300 choice programs. So Mr. Bogus, why is it so important to offer these really individualized programs for students to cater to their own interests for their education? Amy, it's a, it's a great question, and I think one that our community needs to hear. So from a school board level to our superintendent to what we're doing in choice and career options, there's a fervent belief that we have to cast a vision for a new generation of learners and leaders, pre and post COVID. And it centers around redefining what success looks like for this new generation. It's around success defined by not necessarily just college or university, but college, university, trade school, the military, apprenticeships. The idea that pigeonholing our students to one track or another is not what the full definition or where their full potential really lies. Here in the school district of Palm Beach County, our vision is to create a student that is college and career ready. This is no longer a mindset of those kids and these kids. This is a combination of academic aptitude and technical skill attainment. And those are the aspects from Palm Beach County to our state to a nation that I, I, I can say personally that I want for my five children, but also for the 180,000 students that we have throughout this this entire district. So when you talk about 300 plus choice and career academies, you have everything from cybersecurity to culinary to auto tech, uh, JROTC, uh, anything in between, medical academies, um, agrotech that Dr. Johnson will talk about as a new program. So there's a variety of things and really we're identifying a student's passions and then linking them to what their success measures will look like and and ultimately what their future will, will hold. Speaking of those new programs, Dr. Johnson, if you can tell us a little bit about those programs, uh, very exciting things happening at schools around the district, adding uh, to the choice offerings that we have. Yes, uh, as Mr. Bogus just pointed out, if I can add uh, one of the beauties of our programs, not only is to uh, provide a variety to meet the interest of our students, but we also have to look at our local economy and the needs and demands of our industry. So when we open new programs, we take a look at what's in demand, what our business leaders are telling us they need in terms of future employment, and we try to accommodate that by opening new programs. To, to that um, point, we have several new academies that are opening up for FY22. 
So we ask that you will take a look at those as you um, make your selections. One of them is a new agri-technology program at Glade Central High School. They will also be launching a new computer science program that will feature Java development programming at Glade Central High School in FY22. At Santa Lucia's High School, we're really excited about uh, the support we've received from our local education foundation and the Frederick A. DeLuca Foundation. We're launching a new cybersecurity program at Santa Lucia's High School with the support from those two foundations. Also with our K-8s, we have three new K-8s. One is at Verde uh, Elementary School. They launched their sixth grade this year. And next year they are going to be welcoming a new Cambridge uh, lower secondary program. Uh, at Addison Meisner, uh, they will start their new sixth grade class next year in FY22 and students will be able to apply for their business leadership academy, which is going to have a huge focus on entrepreneurship. So that's going to be really exciting. Also, Plamosa School of the Arts. That is going to be a new K-8 and they will welcome their first sixth grade class in FY22. So if you're interested in the performing arts, anything from dance to music to uh, digital media, these are all going to be available at Plamosa School of the Arts next year. So as you are making your choices, uh, take a look at these exciting new programs and consider some of the schools that offer them. Of many of our existing programs, we have programs that offer industry certifications, which means that by the time students graduate from high school, they can jump straight into a career. They could go to college and they always have that certification to fall back on. And Dr. Johnson, you have some, some facts and figures about those industry certifications, right, for how many students have earned those in recent years? Sure. So I, I always uh, use big figures here, and over the last five years, I would say very easily we've had over 50,000 industry certifications earned by our students here in Palm Beach County. Those industry certifications range from Microsoft certifications to ASC certifications with our automotive programs to NCCER certification for our construction and our HVAC students to a variety of different uh, health science related certifications that not only give the students um, an upper edge, but allows them to, in many cases, walk out of the door of high school ready for employment, such as pharmacy technicians, certified nursing assistants, and so many more. So when it comes to our career and technical education related academies, there's usually an industry certification attached, if not one, perhaps several. And so we really do try to make sure that our students walk away with a diploma and something else, and that something else is an industry credential and also in many cases some experience behind it through their internships, on the job training, and other work-based related options. I know that those industry certifications are especially important to our superintendent, Dr. Fenoy, who really believes in making sure that students have a plan when they get out of high school and they have a way to go out into the workforce with real training. And I think it's absolutely incredible that they're able to do that in high school. Some of our most uh, sought after programs are performing arts, of course. We have some amazing performing arts programs. What is the audition process going to look like this year? So I'm gonna have Ms. Coble talk a little bit about the audition process and what that's gonna look like for FY22. Okay, so that has been the most sought after question. Uh, for the auditions this year, uh, for obvious reasons and health reasons, um, they will be held virtually. The audition schools are working very hard on uh, creating guidelines to, um, to be able to host a virtual audition. I can tell all families this. It, the process that they've known in the past on what the students would need to, um, if they want to practice, that's not going to change much. The guidelines on the actual platform on how to host it virtually is really what they're working on right now. So we want all families who are interested in the audition guidelines, after November 1st, we will post them. It will be on our district website, but you can get the most recent information on the specific school websites, Bach Middle School of the Arts, Dreyfus School of the Arts, the Conservatory, Boynton Beach High School. Uh, if you actually go onto the showcase page uh, and click on the blue tile naming that school, you will be able to get the direct link to their school and ask any questions to the coordinator as well. 
beyond some of the performing arts programs, we are starting to get some questions in on this Facebook Live, which we definitely mm -hmm. want everyone to ask their questions. That's exactly what we're here for right mm -hmm. now. One of those is, does what does lottery mean? What does that process look like? And does it mean that students are chosen at random? Whoever wants okay. to answer it. Uh, okay, so I can answer <laughs> We're that. starting to get kind of into the, okay, into so the, the lottery process. process. Part. <laughs> so um, when the lottery, I'm sorry, when the application opens on November 2nd, it's really important to let everybody know that you do not have to be the first one to apply. You can be the first one or you can be the last one on the eve of the deadline and all eligible applicants will go into that lottery. The lottery is basically the process in which students are selected to um, fill the seats, the, the allocated seats in each program and simply any eligible student and when we see eligible a lot of our programs in the upper grade levels and uh, art schools need uh, certain GPA criteria met and or eligibility through an audition in order to be eligible for the lottery. So the lottery is simply the process in which students are selected to fill those seats. We have another question about that process specifically with how results are delivered when those, re those results come out in April and if we have a date for that at this point. So the results will come out on April 1st and so the same platform or portal that parents apply uh, through the Smart Choice application, that is the same location they will be able to go to their parent dashboard and they will see their results there. Um, so once the parents apply, all of that information will be contained within the application itself. And on April 1st, when the results are released, the results will be uh, displayed on their parent dashboard. And I think we wanna make sure that everyone knows that the choice application for this year or that will be going on come November 2nd is for next school year. We have a question from Laura saying if a child is in the middle of the school year, are they able to switch to choice? So that answer would be no. Uh, the process that we're starting right now, this is for the 2021-2022 school year, which starts next August. We do it early because we want to be able to accept the applications between November and January, have time for the audition and eligibility process, and conduct the lottery. When the results are, are published um, and sent out in April, both on your parent dashboard at mypvchoiceapp.com, uh, as well as via email, you would receive an email response uh, once the lottery results are released. Um, that is for the starting school year starting in August 2021. Now as families start to explore different options, look at various schools, we have a question from Brittany about if appointments need to be made for those virtual open houses or how they'll register for those. Does that depend on the school? Are they doing that through our, our virtual platform? How exactly? Uh, obviously they'll see the time frames or whatnot on there, but how they'll let them know that they're gonna be attending. So there's, there's actually two ways that uh, families can find out about the open houses. Uh, first is to go onto the showcase platform, showcaseofschools.org forward slash showcase. And when you click on the blue tile that names the school that you're interested in, there's also a link to the open house calendar. Uh, you can search through um, to find your school to see what days and times they're offering it, but most specifically go onto the school website and they'll be able to share what their open house date is and when they're going to release the link to that virtual site. I don't know if they're all out there yet, but I could just encourage you to keep visiting the school websites and our open house calendars and we will also add those links. We have a specific question from Shay about if any schools have, I think she was specifically looking in, in her area, but how through that virtual platform will people search for specific programs such as construction, HVAC or automotive programs. I think there's a functionality where it's gonna be really easy to find that information. Uh, yes, so in the, in the uh, showcase again, there is a filter option. You can either search by every school or you can select by uh, program. There's a program drop down menu. By school, if there's a certain school in which you know you wanna search the programs or if you type in the keyword search. Um, if you have any specific questions and you're not getting a response by the chat right away, because I'm sure it's a very busy time, always feel free to send an email to choicequestions at palmbeachschools.org. 
uh, and they can also assist you if you cannot find what you're looking for. You can also search in that booklet that's at the top of the showcase uh, webpage. It is, um, you can download the booklet or if you click on the image, it'll take you directly to the booklet, which allows you to search by programs as well as schools. There's so much valuable information in that booklet. Even if people can't go in person to the South Florida Fairgrounds and pick it up, you all have made sure that there is all that information accessible for them from home right now. And so we have some more questions coming in. One of them is, can a student relocating into the school district apply for choice programs or is it specifically for students who are already in our schools? I think that's a really good question. Dr. Johnson? So in order to apply for a choice program, our choice policy requires that um, students reside here in Palm Beach County. They have to be a Palm Beach County resident. So um, we do accept late applications after the initial lottery um, deadline is over. And if there are seats available, we do process late applications for students who may have moved into the area after the initial lottery. But uh, with the initial lottery, you would have to be a Palm Beach County resident. And if I could just add, um, if you think that you're moving in or you know that you're moving in over the holidays and it's um, not an arts-based program, just wait to apply. You have until January 29th. I know a lot of parents, a lot of families make that move over the holiday time. So you don't have to apply on November 2nd when the application opens. You can wait until you move here and get established and you can send us an email and we can always assist you if you have any questions once you are established residency in Palm Beach County. We have a similar kind of question, although this is for those who are already living here, but Amy, great name by the way, asked <laughs> what if the program you want is in your zone school? Do you have to apply for it or how does that process work? So if it is a choice program, whether it is a choice allowing for out of boundary students or if it is considered an in-house academy. So in the book, in the booklet, and as well as the uh, virtual showcase platform, you will see that some are under choice and some are under in-house. Any program indicated under any of those categories will require an application. Mm -hmm. So if you are at a school and you're zoned for that school and the school has a choice program or an in-house program, you will have to apply for that program. We do have a bunch of questions still about performing arts or anything that requires an audition, so I definitely wanna make sure we get uh, some information to people about this. This particular question is about the process. Do you get picked in the lottery first and then audition, or do you audition first? So as part of the eligibility process, the audition occurs prior to the lottery. So once you apply and the first deadline of December 18th comes and goes, the arts school will reach out and schedule an audition. The auditions are conducted and then students who met the eligible audition criteria will be the students that go into the lottery. Once the results are released, that's, that is when everybody will uh, find out the results of their audition and or if they were placed. We have a question from Diane that is kind of within the same vein of how this process itself works. Asking if a zone, if this, the zone school has a choice program and they rank it as a number other than first, ranking a first choice as a non-zone school, is there the same chance of getting into that first choice or do they have more of a chance of getting into a program at their own school that they're zoned for? So I can, th this question has actually uh, come up a lot and I, can, and I can probably debunk a couple of myths here with adding a second choice to an application. We recommend that you put your most preferred choice program option as your first choice. And the reason is that when the lottery is conducted, it is going to run every first choice applicant for that program. If you are selecting a program at your zone school as a second choice, you will be considered for it after all first choice applicants who had selected it as a first choice are considered and potentially placed. Um, we are lucky enough to be able to accommodate most of our in-boundary students, but there are some programs that are very popular that do not always capture every single second choice. So the best advice we can give is that you select your most preferred as a first choice. And one more thing, 
Guys, it does not matter if you put a second choice, it will not impact your chances in the lottery for, for your first choice selection. That was a great answer and I think provided hopefully a lot of helpful information to those who are watching right now. Tati has a great question as well. If the child is already in a choice program now, do they have to reapply for next year or are they automatically kept in the program? So they're automatically kept into that program. So we encourage if your child has already applied and been assigned to a school in a program, you do not need to apply again. However, if there is a sibling that you wish to join the student at the school in a program, you will need to submit an additional application for that sibling. So a lot of times there's a myth out there that if my child is already, uh, one student is already at a school for the choice program, then my second child that may be younger automatically gets to go to that school because my first child is already there. And that is not true. So each individual student has to have an application and has to be assigned to the school in order to attend the choice program. Another question that I think is pretty common is, is there a wait list? We have a question from another Amy about that. I'm attracting all the Amy's to the Facebook <laughs> website. <but laughs> is there a wait list if you don't make maybe your first choice or second choice? So yes, there is a wait pool. So obviously there are some programs that are very popular. So we have more applicants than there are seats available. So as any lottery, uh, some people will be selected and some may not. Those students who were eligible and were not selected in the lottery will go into what's called a wait pool. The way the wait pool works is if the school has openings, uh, open seats that will become available, uh, we will then uh, pull from a random selection from the wait pool uh, for additional placements. For some of those programs that require certain test scores, grades, we have a couple of questions with people who have some uh, concerns since there were no spring FSA tests. Uh, so how will that work going into the process this year without those scores? So the majority, or I should say all, uh, of, our, of our programs, um, with the exception of, uh, I believe, one, Lake Worth, um, Lake Worth Biomedical, which does look, look at state assessments, although not for this past year, I think, uh, think we wouldn't even have to look at that concern for a couple of years, but state scores, state assessments have no impact on eligibility. The eligibility criteria is outlined in the booklet uh, and on the school's websites, but you will see the criteria being GPA, um, certain math courses and or, or auditions. State scoring and state assessments do not have any impact at this time. Okay, that was a good answer for that. And so we do have some questions as well about transportation. I'm sure that's something you guys hear a lot. Mm -hmm. So yes. how does transportation work for those who get into a choice school that's not their own school? Okay, so, um, so there are established bus stops, and if I can go back to this, uh, I don't know if I can go back to this showcase uh, website. There it is. Okay, there you are. So on each school, there's actually a, a tab that says transportation, and if you click on that link, it will take you to the specific school's choice transportation zone. Within the, the outline zone, there are established bus stops. Now, I'm sure Jay can, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Bacchus can, can weigh in a little bit Mr. Boggs can weigh in a little bit more on the transportation and the um, uh, having to register for the bus. In the past, we understand that students were able to uh, take a bus within this transportation zone. And I know we have a lot of questions for this year as well. This year, students do have to register for the bus and they will be assigned one bus stop, which is the closest to their address as reflected in the student information system, SIS. Um, Mr. Bogus, you can even weigh in on the on the importance of um, having to register and 
Certainly. I, I think you did a great job answering that question, Tara. Um, I, I, I want to kind of back up on the transportation question only to, to say that we've made a conscious decision in this district years back um, to expand the choice offerings and build programs as opposed to trying to, to bus students from Boca to Jupiter and Jupiter to Wellington um, a, a, as part of it. We'd rather invest in a program of study. Take medical sciences. You've got that at nearly every high school in, in Palm Beach County. And really in doing so, that way we've cut down and shrunk the transportation size and the zone in order to, to really increase equity and access throughout our district. So I wanted to make sure that that was very clear as part of our transportation plan. In addition, uh, because of the, the, the COVID impact to how we do public education, we, we've restricted the number of stops and really assigned a stop as per SIS so that not we're not necessarily getting random stops on a daily or um, we're trying to accommodate but really as it stands right now your assigned stop in SIS is where you're registered and that's how you're being picked up. You brought up equity and access and I want to make sure to bring up this point of obviously with distance learning since March choice programs have continued which I think is absolutely <coughs> crucial for us to mention that students are able to access these programs through distance learning. Of course, we don't know at this mm -hmm. time what next year, a year from now, is going mm -hmm. to look like. But Mr. Vargas, if you could touch upon how we managed to accommodate these programs in this kind of distance learning environment. Sure. Um, so just as a data point, uh, throughout all of COVID, our teachers have done an incredible job of upskilling and reskilling what it looks like in any one of our classrooms. Um, learning terms of synchronous versus asynchronous, ideas around modalities, teaching both to brick and mortar students and now the combination of online and in our, in our uh, brick and mortar classrooms. But as part of that, uh, we've had nearly 80,000 participants throughout of all of Palm Beach County in different professional development sessions. Specific to career and tech ed, we've had nearly 5,000 participants uh, coming back through industry certification training, uh, coming back through NCCER, or going and, and getting their own certifications to provide the latest and greatest of what that next version 21st century cert looks like. In addition to that, um, I, I, our team has has put together a a, a computer uh, program that's going to then allow 14,000 laptops to be deployed throughout our all of our CTE programs, and in doing so, things like. Autodesk or uh, Adobe Photoshop, Premiere Pro, that really wouldn't necessarily work on a Chromebook. We've invested to make sure that that type of s certification and career training continues on and that they have the technology to, to learn both at home in, the, in your kitchen or if you're live with us in, in one of our classrooms. I think that's absolutely incredible that our teachers, we need to give a shout out to them as well, our choice mm -hmm. teachers who are specially trained mm -hmm. in these areas. Uh, that they have been able to do that. I also want to bring up schools beyond choice programs. We have a lot of different offerings in terms of academics. ACE programs, IB, people have some questions about the differences between those as well as AMP, gifted. It goes along the lines of every school in the school district of Palm Beach County is your best choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we can maybe break down a couple of those and that we have these offerings beyond yeah. uh, choice programs. As so well. what I would say at almost every high school, you're going to have a variety of different options when it comes to high academic programs, whether it's advanced placement, uh, better known as AP through College Board, whether it's uh, dual enrollment where students are actually taken an actual college course, uh, typically at Palm Beach State College, but we also have dual enrollment uh, through Embry-Riddle University, uh, through our BASA program at Boynton Beach High School, and a couple of other of our high schools, uh, Lake Worth High and Boca High. We also have a very robust Cambridge program throughout our high schools uh, that offer ACE courses as well and an ACE diploma. Um, so really it is up to parents to kind of do their homework, communicate with the individuals at the school, communicate with the school counselors, 
to really package a program of study over a course of um, four years for a high school student to see what program would be best and what courses would be best to complement uh, your academy courses. So you don't have to sacrifice your academy courses uh, to take advantage of these high academic uh, programs, mm -hmm. whether it be, again, ACE, AP, International Baccalaureate, or dual enrollment. Uh, I think it's about sitting down and uh, doing some homework with the school counselor and having those conversations about what students have an idea in terms of what they think they might wanna do once they graduate. Uh, we also have these high-end programs uh, starting in elementary school. You mentioned the AMP program, uh, which is offered at our elementary schools, but we have advanced courses uh, in middle schools, and we also have the opportunity for our middle school students to take high school courses while they're in uh, middle school. Some of them are career-related courses, uh, but many of them are also academic courses. So the best person to really uh, communicate with would be uh, the schools themselves, the school counselor, the academy coordinators within the schools to really kind of craft out a plan and program of study for your individual child. And, the, and some of those programs, Amy, they're not, um, you don't have to apply to all of them, they're just offered at the school. Uh, you mentioned the gifted programs at the elementary level. These are not choice programs. If it's offered at your zone school, um, uh, I think uh, most of the uh, elementary schools now have a full-time or part-time program. Uh, you could just, again, use that Find My School um, option on the showcase, find out what your zone school is, and you can go onto their site or reach out to them to see what programming they offer, just for being a student living in the zone. Yeah, and planning for a child's future, matriculating through schools, it leads us into a question about if a child is in a program right now and they are matriculating, what this uh, particular person said, into high school, do they have to apply to that program at that high school? Yes, they do. So if they're currently, let's say, in a pre-culinary academy in middle school, and they want to continue on in high school into one of the culinary academies, and it's a choice program, they will have to submit an application, whether it's uh, a choice, whether they're taking in out-of-boundary students, or if it's an in-house program, they would have to apply. I, I do want to uh, uh, describe the in-house programs in terms of curriculum. They're the same as a choice program that accepts out-of-boundary students. The only difference is for in-house, the applicants for that can only be the students who are zoned for that school. So I wanted to make that distinction. And also, I mean, if there is a student going from a, a middle school pre-culinary into a high school pre-culinary and they do apply as a first choice to that culinary, they would also get a, it's called a strand preference in the lottery from continuing that same program of study into a higher grade level. And we have a really great question from Sam that I wanna make sure to ask. Can someone change the selection after submission, but before the deadline of January 28th? So let's say they've submitted their mm -hmm. application on PB, mypbchoiceapp.com. Yes. Can they change it after doing that, but before yes. the deadline? Yes, so uh, the online application, which again is at mypbchoiceapp.com, once you submit one or two selections, you are allowed to go back in, it's, it's programmed to allow you to go in at one time and make one program change. So if you picked a choice one and a choice two, and by, let's just, we're just gonna use this example that they're non-arts audition schools that have that first December deadline, you can go in until, Dece uh, I'm sorry, January 29th and make a one-time change. If it's an arts audition school, if you chose Bach Middle School of the Arts as a first choice, or I'm sorry, as a second choice, and let's say Elsie Swain or another zone middle school as a first choice, you would not be able to make any changes to the arts audition school that you selected as a second choice because they had an absolute deadline of that December date. So you can go in one time to make a change to the program as long as it's by those published deadline dates. We do have a lot of questions coming in on this Facebook Live. I want to make sure that everyone knows that mm -hmm. where they can go to get answers to some very specific questions. Um, what are the best places for people to reach out right now to, to get answers? We do have to wrap mm -hmm. up in a few minutes. We still okay. have a few more minutes. We'll answer a couple more questions. But okay. I want to make sure that everyone who's asking questions on here is able to get those answered. 
I would think for right now the best direction to go is to go onto the showcase platform, which again is palmbeachschools.org forward slash showcase. Look at the blue tile for the school that you're looking to ask questions about. First of all, you may find some answers right in this virtual showcase platform. There's some FAQs, there's some welcome and information from the principals and coordinators, or you can click on the contact us uh, email address under the program coordinator and a lot of they're all, they're waiting there for your questions right now a lot of them are setting up a, 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 a virtual live session where you can get an auto reply email and you'll be able to log in during a certain time to do a live chat with them if you have any program specific please contact the schools directly if you have lottery based or application questions or generic questions with some specific details, please send us an email at choicequestions at palmbeachschools.org. We want to be sure that we have, that we take the time and research your question and get specific answers back to you, which we can do a little bit better than a live chat. So if it's a little more detailed, send us an email and we'll get back to you. And people can also reach out to specific schools to yes, inquire, and that absolutely. information is built into our virtual showcase of schools platform, right? Correct. I think that that's a great resource as well for people to remember. And we do have a couple of questions about the virtual open houses or about open houses in general. I want to remind mm -hmm. everyone that visitors are not allowed at schools at this time. So that's why those open houses will be virtual. That's right. And a lot of schools are planning those, which I think will be great. Mm -hmm. I just want to, before we get off of here, to really you know, break down when people go to the platform what they're going to, what kind of information they're going to find there for anybody who might have missed the very beginning of the of this segment and and why we included the information that we did for people to explore Mr. Bogger, would you like to? Sure. Um, so again, reiterating that we weren't able to meet in person today, and um, that is unfortunate. But I think through this process, we've opened up the doors to, to allow greater availability and the opportunity to, to sustain well beyond a one-day showcase that this platform will be up during the entire choice process um, from start to finish and, and really allowing other schools that might not have had a choice program, the opportunity to showcase the incredible things that go on on their campus, to highlight their leadership, and ultimately the culture of all of our Palm Beach County schools. When you go onto this virtual platform, um, we have step-by-step -step directions from identifying, again, your program of study, which I say is that that is your alignment to your passion, and ultimately not, not what will be for the next four years of possibly your elementary, middle, or, or high school experience but what the rest of your life is going to look like and starting that as early as possible and starting to gain what that really looks like. So it, it, it's a step-by-step -step process. You'll be able to identify not only your boundary school but also choice programs and in doing so when you get to that place where you're ready to, to make that decision um, that, that's coming up November 2nd. So I, I'd, I'd turn it back to the team of, of any other aspects that, that we haven't got to go through but we wanted to highlight today. Um, I would just say to parents, um, take your time, do your research, take a look at what schools have to offer, including the zone school uh, based on your address, because a lot of times we do focus on uh, the choice schools and the programs um, at other schools that are choice, and sometimes we don't realize that our neighborhood school right down the street may also have a very viable program that your child may be interested in. So I will reiterate something that Ms. Coble said earlier. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are the first applicant or the very last applicant on January 29th, uh, if you're applying to um, a choice program or December 18th, if you're applying for a performing arts program, um, as long as you get your application in by the set deadline, uh, the application will be be entered and uh, will go through the lottery process if you meet the eligibility criteria. So you have some time, so I don't want you to think that you have to apply as soon as the application opens on November 2nd. So take your time, take a look at some of those new programs that we talked about earlier that are starting in FY22 and um, just uh, be prepared to be wowed by what our schools have to offer here in Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to start looking through that platform. I'm sure everyone is too. Just a reminder, if we didn't get to your questions here on Facebook Live, please go to palmbeachschools.org forward slash showcase and you there is a live chat feature going on until eight o'clock tonight to get your questions answered. You could also email choicequestions at palmbeachschools.org. Just a reminder, the application window for choice programs opens on November 2nd. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to our choice leaders here who Thank have you. been spearheading this process. I hope everyone has a great evening and enjoy the showcase of schools. Mm.